what everyone saw and the plume of smoke that everyone in San Diego could see. The fireball was just so big, you would have just thought an entire one block radius was just completely wiped out. Actually, it was a sunny day, but I looked in my rear view mirror and there was this huge plume of smoke going up. I mean, it was a huge day in, in San Diego history and certainly in North Park history. Anytime I try to move someplace else, I always have to come back for the trees in Balboa Park. It's just a really warm, home-like feeling. And on uh, Gay Pride Day, we go around and just look at all the flags because it's, this is sort of moving, pat, moving out of Hillcrest. So there's gay neighborhoods, not so much neighborhoods, but just interspersed with straights. And now there's some younger families moving in with kids. I was the executive director of North Park Main Street. And North Park Main Street is a portion of the National Trust for Historic Preservation. Some of the things we've done is actually recreate buildings that um, sort of look like they were back when. The look of the houses, just the history of them, it's just so much better than, you know, uh, you know every cookie cutter houses right. where, oh, there's, you know, Every fourth house is the same one. Yeah. I don't like that at all. No. Everything's individualistic here. I like that. I was five blocks away at St. Augustine High School, and we were on a break, and you know we were we were sitting on the step just like this, you know, and uh, we heard this boom behind us, and uh, we 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 just kind of turned and looked, and just like you see that airplane right there right now, you know, except lower. You know what? I just said to my friends, look, they're, they're making a movie. Because you couldn't even believe it was for real. Because you don't see jetliners with their wings on fire. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and we didn't know what the two other little pieces we saw flying away from it. We didn't realize that they had, it was a mid-air collision. But uh, yeah, I watched you know, the plane kind of bank and just kind of come down. and. Sorry, it's just the thought of it. No, it okay. uh, I just remember when it hit, and I saw that big fireball go up, and I just thought, oh my God, I just lost my family. The first time I uh, went to the intersection of Dwight and Nile, it was April 2008. That was my first trip out there to see um, the site and to start talking to people about uh, my idea for doing a documentary about the anniversary of the crash. Uh, I just remember, I remember thinking how compact it was and um, the houses were all close together. Uh, I was a little scared at first because I thought I was going to get a lot of uh, doors slammed and, and or people just telling me they didn't want to talk about it, but that wasn't the case at all. It was, it was a great experience and people People were willing and, and I think ready at the time to start talking about this and relive it and, and sort of put the past behind and, and move on. And so this is the site of the crash here at Dwight and Nile behind me. You can see from the wrought iron fence, there were 22 homes that were destroyed, completely destroyed. Now they're all new homes. Uh, there's a few craftsman style homes, but all have been replaced uh, since, since 1978. And my brother was, was a victim on the plane. Um, so basically our story is that we were supposed to be traveling to Davis on Friday before the Monday of the accident. And I was going to UC Davis and he was gonna start his first day at UCSD on Monday. And the plan was for us to drive from San Diego to Davis, drop me off and come back so that he could start school on Monday. We had all kinds of car troubles the entire way, and this is 1978, so we didn't have any cell phones. Yeah. And we didn't think about calling home and couldn't call home. We ended up car breaking down on, on the five in the Angeles National Forest where there's no exits. Um, so he was not able to drive the car back in time for his class, which started at nine o'clock on September 25th. 
He was actually the last person on the plane. Um, when I dropped him off at the airport, he ran in to make sure he could get a, uh, a ticket, came back out and said, I, I got a ticket on the plane. I'm the last one. And that was the last time I saw him. And the only way that we were able to identify him, because it was just so tragic, was through his, um, his dental records and his wallet. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I was a lucky one. Um, I was afraid to come home. Everyone said, run home, run home. That's right next to your house. And I was too afraid to, because I thought, what was I going to, what was I going to see when I got here? And then I walked over to another friend's house over there in Burlingame, um, right next to South Park. Right. And, uh, I remember the four of us walking and sniveling. I still feel it. I, I still feel it. Yeah. Exactly that walk. It was like a, it was like a death march almost. It just seemed, uh, we were just so sad. Well, when I first decided to buy a house, North Park uh, was the neighborhood that came to the top, and. I really like, it's so eclectic that I decided before I bought to kind of drive around at night and during the day and talk to people and ask them how they like North Park. Yeah. I stopped them on the streets and I knocked on their doors. I'm sure they thought I was odd on knocking on the doors and asking. Sure. Um, and everything I heard was real positive and uh, North Park became my choice. Several times in NTSB reports, when the plane is going in, somebody in the cockpit on the recorder says, Ma, I love you, or something like that, and they whistle just before the plane hits. That's what this, that's what the co-pilot did. Wow. And it gives you chills to know that somebody's that professional. Yeah. Two and a half hours later, and got home, and my mom was still hysterical. Um, and, you know, I just, because, you know, the kitchen window's right there. I mean, yes. so she could see right down here. And, and she said she was looking out the window and she looked up and she saw that plane. She goes, oh, my God, I, that smiling face, because, you know, the PSA planes had the smile on the front of the, on the nose. And she goes, that smiling face was coming right down at us. I was in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. I was on a job working and um, my friend Marlene called me from San Diego after the crash. And um, later when I went to sleep, I had this, it's like my something, I left my body and had one of those flying kind of dreams. And I came over the crash site and I could, the smoke and I could smell it. And I just reached down my hand and I was lifting like lifting people out, but it wasn't people, it was more like what I was, like soul or spirit or something like that. Actually, when I first moved in, within two months, uh, both neighbors on either side came to me at different times and told me a story that was identical. And what had happened was the gentleman who lived here with his wife had gone out to do some errands and his wife had gone to work and when he heard about the crash, he immediately came home and the firemen let, let him in because the, these houses weren't in danger of fire. And he found a, a body in the back of his, in the back bedroom, a decapitated uh, body of a woman, and he thought it was his wife. And like anyone, he freaked out for hours until he realized when his wife called him that she was okay. And um, it wouldn't have prevented me from buying the house had I known about it ahead of time. I keep a dream, I've been keeping dream journals for a long time. And I go back and I reread them at times. And I read an entry that I made that I had bought in a small, that I was gonna buy a small house by a busy street and I didn't like the kitchen. And that's exactly what happened here. But the most interesting part was in the dream, a woman 
came to me and said, I live in the ground, but I'm very happy here. And uh, I read that 10 years after I bought the house. And to me, it was, the house picked me. I guess what's true is that um, that horrible event is another thing that possibly turned things around. People really said, no, we don't want this place to go downhill. That We don't want this to be the place that's just remembered for bad stuff. And people did turn around. And I grew up over a little bit south and east of here. And w that North Park was kind of one of the main shopping areas. That's how old I am. <laughs> and used to go to the North Park Toyland Parade. And I would go to Penny's and shop for shoes and school clothes there. Um, and it's changed a lot. Oh, and the theater. It was a real theater in those days. I like the art scene up here, yeah. I like the diversity of it. I like that there are really edgy, edgy people doing cool, edgy stuff, young people. And then there's also like, you know, nice watercolors of landscapes and uh -huh. things like that. And you can go to Ray at night and all of those different art things, studios are open, the galleries are open. The artist designed uh, little plaques on the sidewalk that show all the birds that exist in, say, in North Park. So it's called Bird Park because all the birds, and when from the air, it was designed to look like a bird. So it looks like a bird from the air. I think people move here, I mean, a great example would be Bill. Bill is a Navy SEAL that lives over on 33rd Street, just about four houses down uh, from me. And one night I'm out there and I'm putting up all my Halloween decorations. And he's like, wow, you know, you're doing this and that, and you know. And where else would you end up talking to someone and, and you know, sure enough, you know what we talked about? The plane crash. And I invited him in, showed him the old newspapers and all that, and we had a beer together. And he was saying to me, he goes, oh, I love this neighborhood. I'm never gonna move away from here. I think that's what the neighborhood does to you. You don't want to copy historic buildings because you don't want people to not be able to distinguish that which is new and that which is old. I like it. I'm here. Next I'm going to get me a little dog, walk around Balboa Parkway. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's still around, her spirit, but the energy of the house is, I pick up on energy pretty easily, and the energy of the house is pretty positive. <laughs>